Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be walking you through a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up Google Ads dynamic remarketing campaigns. Now, these are pretty much campaigns that allow you to target people with ads that include the product from your Google Merchant feed. A lot of people over rely on Performance Max to do this for them. However, I found that actually having a dedicated campaign with a dedicated budget running in the background works really, really well because you are specifically and constantly targeting your bottom of funnel audiences, which are pretty much where all the money sits for most businesses. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, before we get into the build itself, there's a few things you have to have in place. First is gonna be the conversion tag. So just your Google Ads conversion tag. Um, that should be a given so you can track your purchases. The second is your Google Ads tag itself. Now you wanna make sure all these parameters have been set up. What these parameters do is they allow you to track very specific things or actions on your website. So for us, the main one is we want Ecom Pro did set up. What does the Ecom Pro did mean? So this just allows your dynamic ads to show people the exact product they viewed on your website, which is what we want to do with this. Okay. So you want to make sure this is set up correctly. The way you will know that is you'll see it's getting hits. So it should be having a certain amount of hits yesterday, seven days, and there should be a certain percentage of all hits. This should pretty much marry up with the sort of traffic you have in your website. Let's say you get a thousand people a day. This probably makes sense to have around 211 viewing products specifically, right? So again, you want to make sure conversion tracking is set up. You want to make sure that the tag is set up with all of these parameters firing. Okay, dokie. Next thing you want to do is make sure that your Google Ads account is linked to your Google Merchant Center account, right? Because what we're doing is we're pulling in our product feed from our Merchant Center into the ads. So if these two are not connected, it's not going to work. And again, it's really simple to do that. You can just go to connected products, link your Google Ads to your GMC and you're good to go. Lastly is we're going to need to set up our audiences. Now you can find the audiences in tools, shared library, audience manager. Now, because this is a retargeting campaign, we want to test a variety, right? So pretty much the way you can do this is by clicking on the blue plus, clicking on website visitors, and you can go to the segment members, or sorry, actions here and segment members and set up your audiences. I would suggest setting up a few variations to test in different ad groups of this type of campaign. First is gonna be just generic website visitors. I like to do is test 30, anyone who's visited the website in the last 30 days, anyone who's visited the website in the last 14 days, and anyone who's visited the website in the last seven days. You can do 90, 180 days. Google actually lets you to retarget a lot further out. But what you'll tend to find is the closer or the smaller the retargeting window is, so seven days, 14 days, the better your performance tends to be. Um, again, because you're striking while the iron's hot. You're showing an ad to someone pretty much straight after they viewed a product. Okay, so after your website retargeting, you want to go into tag. And then what I like to do is create retargeting audiences for anyone who's added to cart, added to checkout, etc. Okay, so after you've created these, and by the way, you can just name them here. You just follow these steps. You want to exclude anyone who's actually purchased uh, within the last... Uh, well, time frame, right? I like to do this actually as a separate audience and then just add it in as an exclusion afterwards. So for example, you could literally just go to tags or you could go to purchase event and then just exclude it like this. And then you can just add it in as an exclusion afterwards. Um, this is really important because we want to retarget people with products they were looking at, but didn't purchase, right? We're kind of giving them a gentle reminder, a small nudge, okay? If they've bought already, you can run a post-purchase campaign, but that's an entirely different setup. So once you've created those audiences, all you're gonna do is name them here and they'll show up in the audience manager. Now, getting into the build itself, right? So all you're gonna do is click on this blue plus here, which allows you to create a new campaign. So as such, and then we are going to select the objective. You don't have to pick an objective. However, I do like to pick one because I feel like, and I've tested this a lot, Google just aligns the campaign slightly better to who your audience is so in this case we're going to pick sales because we are doing this for an e-commerce brand and then you're going to pick your conversion goals right now you probably will have a few pop-ups so you might have um like website visitors add to cart checkouts phone calls you can pick whatever makes the most sense for 99 percent of you it's going to be purchases that's what you'll want to choose as your conversion goal because the purpose of this uh, campaign type, which is dynamic remarketing, is that we actually wanna run ads to people who are um, have viewed a product but haven't bought yet. We're trying to get them to buy. So again, purchase, 
makes the most sense most of the time to have for this campaign. Then we click on continue and you select your campaign type. Now dynamic read marketing is going to run through a display campaign. So all you need to do is hit display and you are going to add in your website. So I'm actually going to skip this bit because for the client's confidentiality. All right. So once you've added in your website, all you need to do is add in the campaign name. Now I would probably label this something like, uh, dynamic remarketing all products us actually no we're going to run this one in the uk so remarketing yep that is spelled correct um so after that we're just going to hit continue and you can see google ads might prompt you to go back to an origin build i'm going to click start new i'd recommend you do that as well just to have a fresh campaign to work with and then after that we just select our location so in this case i'm going to uk if you did want to enter another location by all means we're going to put in uk then we're going to hit location options and we are going to select presence people in or regularly in your included locations do not um go with this even though google recommends it because this just shows your ads to people outside of your target locations. And it's pretty much a recipe for wasting a lot of money. Okay, so after you've set your locations, you can set your language. Um, I want to target in English, so that is absolutely fine. If you wanted to target, let's say in Spanish, you could let's just say you're targeting Spain. But again, we actually want to go with English. So I'm going to hit that. Now, this is where the actual magic happens, right? Under the more settings section within the campaign level, you're going to hit this and you are then going to scroll all the way down to dynamic ads. And you see here, it says no data feed. Well, we're going to add in the data feed from Google Merchant Center. So all we need to do is click on this and then we're going to click on use dynamic ads feed for personalized ads. And we're going to select this. And then all you need to do is select your data feed and add it in. So. All we're going to do is select the data feed and what Google will ask if you don't want to have a filter or you want to apply a filter, right? Now, all this means is do you want to run all products or do you want to filter down by specific products? Now, as a best practice, I found it makes sense to just target all products because again, if somebody was looking at a product and didn't buy, they've probably expressed a certain level of interest. So it makes sense to put it back in front of them where they're more likely to buy. However, if you want to narrow this down and filter your products by let's say, the highest value, highest margin, highest conversion rates. That's totally valid and makes a lot of sense. So by all means, you can totally do that and you can test it. We do do that for a lot of our clients as well and it works really well. But if you wanted to just apply no filter and have it running as normal, totally fine. So after this, you are just going to hit next and you are going to plug in your budget. So I'm just going to put in 50 British pounds. That's probably like 75, 70 US dollars. Um, and that's a daily budget. And after this, we set the bid strategies. Now, my recommendation is always, as this is the e-commerce space, we want to use a conversion value bid strategy. That way, Google is optimizing to get us the highest value customers. So customers that are going to spend the most money as opposed to just a high quantity of customers, which don't necessarily spend a lot of money, right? You would probably rather have five customers spending $1,000 each than let's say a hundred customers spending like $10 each or something like that. Um, so all conversion value allows you to do is optimize for the more higher tier customers that are likely to spend more money. Okay. Now after this, you can set a target ROAS by all means, go ahead and set one. What I like to do is let this run for about seven to 14 days. And after that, plug in a target ROAS. I like to let Google get a feel of what it can achieve, then plug in a ROAS, a target ROAS to get a baseline and then start pumping it up from there. So for now, I'm just going to leave this blank. After that, we are going to click next and then we're going to add in our targeting. Now, this is the second most important layer because we want to make sure we add in our retargeting audiences. So if you go to uh, audience segments and then you click on browse, you will be able to find your audiences, the ones that we created earlier on in the video, underneath this section here, how they've interacted with your business. Now, what I would suggest you do is have a separate ad group for each audience. So let's say you have website visitors from the past 30 days, website visitors from the past 14 days, website visitors from the past seven days. It doesn't make sense to put those all in, all bundle those all together, right? Because there's massive overlap. What you want to do is have those as separate ad groups so you can test which one performs the best. 
And then within those, make sure you're excluding purchases and then any overlaps. So for example, from your 30 day campaign or rather your 30 day ad group, make sure you're excluding uh, the 14 days website visitors and then same thing for the um 14 days make sure you, you exclude the seven days and then obviously exclude your purchases right that way you've got a net clean a net clean positive audience but there's no overlap no purchases but it's super super high value right that's going to work really really well and then if you want to do the same thing with add to cart and check out i would probably do that later on I would like, I like to test slightly higher in the bottom of funnel and then go into your ad audiences, et cetera, right? So again, add those in, add them in a separate ad groups. That's what's gonna make form really, really well. And then we want to click on optimize targeting and we want this turned off, right? So interestingly, it's turned on. Oh, it's because we've not added in anything yet. But again, once you've added in something, you can turn this off. So make that's really, really important because this will just target outside of your initial audiences. All of these additional targeting options here, you can leave. We're only focused on retargeting website visitors. So this you can leave blank, right? So next is the ad creation level. You can see here, we're pretty much on the final phase of the setup for Google Ads dynamic remarketing campaign. So Google is going to pull your website, your URL, and it's going to pull your business name. Feel free to change this. Um, like if you wanted to tweak the final URL or tweak your business name. I've seen multiple times where Google doesn't actually pull the URL correctly. Oh, sorry, it doesn't pull the business name correctly. So yeah. So after you've added in your final URL and your business name, you just need to add in your images. Now, as this is a remarketing campaign, you want to make sure your images align with the intent of your audience, which is a remarketing audience. So by that, I mean, make sure your images are brand heavy. People should be able to see your images and recognize it's your brand straight away, right? Like if you saw a McDonald's logo or Nike logo, right? You would know pretty much instantly who the business is because that you've already interacted with the brand so many times. Same principle here, right? Now, when it comes to the copy, um, the same thing applies. You wanna make it brand focused, but also you want to call out the fact somebody has actually been on your website already. So you wanna, for example, I like to say, forgot something, your basket is waiting. I like to use copy like that. It's a little bit cheeky, a little bit um, forward, but it works really, really well. Say things like, hey, we're still waiting for you. Forgot something, we miss you. Use copy like that, where you're you're actively calling out that the person's been on your website, but hasn't fulfilled a purchase order yet. The last thing I wanna mention on copy is any discounts you have. That's just going to push your conversion rates through the roof. So if you do have like a 10 or 20% discount code you could throw into the copy definitely add it in here now is the time to add it in so that's going to work perfect and what you're going to see is your ad with your products um layered in and this is what's going to make your ad super super relevant because google is now going to target with specific products from your website and because we're combining this with a retargeting audience it's going to work perfect right so after this you're just going to hit create ad and then you click next. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is just add in some copy here just so you can see what happens next. Forgot something, um, we miss you, tends to work really well. And then again, I would just put something in here, like we're waiting for you, um, don't forget about us, okie dokie. And then you simply are gonna hit apply changes, next. After you've created your ad, you pretty much go to the review section and Google will flag any errors. You can see here, there's a couple of errors here, which we have been going back and forward on. So let's see what any of them are. Oh, fine. Okay, adding in some images. Okay, that's fine. As this is a dummy campaign, I'm not gonna actually add in any. But once you've added in your images, you can simply hit publish. It'll show up at the bottom here. And your campaign should be in review for about one to maybe three, four hours and be live. So I hope this video was really, really helpful. Any questions, please do let me know. Free Google Ads course in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.